What's happening, man? All right. This oh, good, good, good. What's up, baby? So if I had a rookie of the year vote, which one should I give it to? Definitely this guy. We got to give it to one person, though. I think we get serious. Because y'all going to split the votes. So if I had an NFL player of the year MVP, who should I give it to? I'm giving it to him. He makes my game easier. I mean, he opens up the passing game. They, they, they worry about him so much and the looks. I mean, I mean you see him out there. No, I see him out there. I see you out there, too, though. I'm telling you, Deck, you know, his job is way harder. He got to control this whole offense. I don't even know half the stuff he does. You know, I'm back there asking him all type of questions. He got to answer my questions and tell them what they're doing, then what they're doing, tell the linemen what they're doing. I mean, in this situation that y'all are in right now, how much pressure is that on you? Uh, it's not any pressure to me. Uh, we take it one game at a time, and I know everybody likes to say that, but I think I mean, we truly do in this locker room. I mean, we want to win. We want to win every game. We want to win this one. We want to win that last one. Uh, that's just the competitors we are. You guys call it pressure. We just call it life, call it reality. You know what I mean? And, and we wouldn't have it any other way, so we love it. Damn, he just put me in the media. You hear that? Uh, he just said, you guys. Man, I played too. <laughs> A compression fracture in Romo's back will keep him out for six to ten weeks. Guys get hurt, and what that creates is an opportunity for somebody else. What was your initial feelings when Jason Garrett said you the starter? What did you feel? Take advantage of my opportunity. I mean, I wanted to play. Uh, never wish that somebody gets hurt or, or wish that I come in in the circumstances. Uh, it's unfortunate, but as crazy as it is, it's the same way I've played at every level. Guy got hurt in high school. Guy got hurt in college. Ended up the same way, so uh, don't ask why. Just take uh, take the opportunity and run with it. How has Tony Romo helped you through this entire process since taking over for him? Yeah, he's helped me a lot on and off the field. Uh, how to deal with things off the field, new people trying to come into my life. Uh, and on the field, I mean, the <laughs> looks. Gonna always happen, Exactly, man. exactly. But the, uh, the looks I see in the game, he's helped me out always, giving me positive feedback. Uh, things he've done, he's done in the past in certain situations. Uh, he's been great, a lot of benefit also have an opportunity to see Tony on the sideline. Do you say things to him during the course of the game? There are certain things that I can come to Tony about. A lot of it just protection-wise just because, you know, Tony's been in this system for 14 years. So he knows the protection in and out. And so when I see certain protections that confuse me or certain mic calls or how to anticipate a certain, a certain look, you know, I can go to him for that. So Zeke, the jester, first downs. Every time you get the first down, instead of giving the signal, you give them the eat. Where did that come from? Uh, you know, Carlos I was running up before me at Ohio State. And that's something he, he did when he played. So I think I continue, continued it year after he left mm -hmm. at Ohio State. Now just how we told the OC that, you know, we, we hot, we feed us. So like I just continue. You like that, right? That, Bro, yeah. <laughs> what, did, what was your reaction to him jumping in the Salvation Army bucket? I told him he's crazy. I was just laughing the whole time. Did you know if time. anything was inside of there or you didn't even? Oh, yeah, I checked it out before the game. Oh, okay. Make sure he scared. definitely scouted out. He asked me pregame, <laughs> should he do it? And like, will, will they find me? Like, no, you, you yeah, they know. find him, all right. Right? Didn't they find you? No, they didn't find you. Do you realize the magnitude that the Dallas Cowboys have across the sports spectrum in general? and what that means and how that feels for you guys. Uh, yeah, I'd say so. I mean, uh, I mean, I grew up a Dallas Cowboy fan. I mean, so just to, to know how I love much... that, though. Everybody that played for the Cowboys, the first thing they say is, I grew up a Cowboy fan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I mean, being three hours from here, just knowing how everybody loves Dallas. I mean, everybody wants to play for the Cowboys. Uh, but as you said, now uh, you can say I'm uh, Mississippi State, but we had some success when I was there. I think that immediate world of success they had prepared me for the success here. I thought coming from Ohio State, you can't really get much bigger than that. But once, it's pretty big, man. Once, once I got here, I realized very, very soon, very quickly that, that it does. When you talk about the Dallas Cowboys in the big stage, you talk about Troy Aikman, Emmitt Smith, Michael Irvin, obviously, and a host of other great Cowboys that have come through here. Right now, based on where you guys are headed in your careers, your names could potentially be there at the end of your career with those guys. Is that anything that's ever crossed your mind since this young season? I mean, one to, to live up to those expectations, I guess, or filling those shoes, I guess you could say. I mean, yeah, we want to be great. We want to be the new triplets. We want to be the, the Cowboys of the 90s, winning Super Bowls and doing all that. Uh, but I think we got we to gotta just stay focused, take it one game at a time, one year at a time. And 
I mean, that's a long time away for we're talking at the end of our careers.